Howdy, howdy, and this is Mr. Potter. Um, in today's video, we're actually going to be talking about quadratic equations, but before we start talking about quadratic equations, I do want to talk about the parabola. Now, the Greeks, when they came up with the idea of a parabola, even before we had algebra to describe it, they described a parabola as a locus or as a set of points. And the way that they defined it is a parabola is set of points equidistant between the focus and the directrix. And of course we've got these terms which don't make sense to us in the concept of a parabola, but the focus is going to be a point that's a certain distance above the highest or a certain distance below the lowest point of the graph. So this white point that I've got here, it's a little bit above the lowest point of the graph. If it was an opening downwards parabola, it would be a little bit below the highest point of the graph. So this is our focus. And then the same distance, we're going to have a line a horizontal line, if I could draw a straight line, that would be great. A horizontal line. So these lines are parallel. And the idea is that the distance from this point, the focus, to a point on the parabola is going to be the same as the distance between that point on the parabola and the point on the line. So I can do a point up here, and that distance has to be the same as this point here. And so these are how the Greeks described uh, a parabola. So I had this point here, which is my focus, and this line down here, which is my directrix. And the distance between my focus and my vertex, this point in this mix maximum or minimum, this distance here is called the focal length. And of course this distance here is going to be the exact same distance. And then we have one other term called the lattice rectum, which is the line connecting two points of the parabola passing through the focus that's parallel to the directrix. So this little yellow line that I've got here, this line segment is called my lattice rectum. Of course, that's more of a Latin term than a Greek term. These aren't really terms that we use a lot in our pre-calculus, though. Normally what happens in pre-calculus is we talk about things that are much more relevant to the equations, to the algebra of a parabola, rather than the geometry of a parabola. So we'll often talk about the extrema point called the vertex. So remember, the vertex is either the highest point or the lowest point. And we talked about this before. We called this an extrema. In other words, it's the extreme value. It's one of the boundaries of our range. It's really the only boundary of our range because the other direction is going to go to infinity. Um, we also have uh, these points where our parabola intersects the x-axis, and so we'll often call these x-intercepts, or sometimes you'll hear them called solutions, sometimes you'll hear them called roots. But these are basically where our parabola is equal to zero. In other words, where x is equal to zero. Or, excuse me, where y is equal to zero. And then, of course, we have the y-intercept. And this is where x equals 0. So we have all these different parts, these points that we talk about. We talk about the vertex, we talk about the x-intercepts, we talk about the y-intercept. And there is one line that we tend to talk about. Parabolas always have a line, a line that passes through the vertex that's called the axis of symmetry. And of course, this is the line that divides the parabola into two symmetric parts. 
And so this is the line that, that passes through the vertex that, pat, that basically divides my parabola into two parts. Now, there are ways to find all of this information algebraically. Geometrically, it's real easy because I can tell you that this point here, this y-intercept, is at the point 0, 3. And I can tell you that this line is the line x equals 2. But actually figuring it out from a formula is, or can be, a little bit more tricky. So we talk about general form or standard form of a parabola. So the general form is the form that we used a lot in our Algebra 2 classes, where I'd have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And the standard form is really the form that we've talked about so far in this class, the idea about translating a parabola and dilating a parabola. So I would have y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And, of course, it's easy to get from one of these to the other. It's easy for me to distribute my a across this binomial after I've squared the binomial and combined like terms. Getting back to general form can be, I mean, getting from general form to standard form can be a little bit tricky, but we had a way to do it in algebra called completing the square. The idea is that, of course, you're going to factor out a completely out of this. So if I had y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, I can factor the a out completely. So I'd have x squared plus b over ax plus c over a. And then, of course, this, I really am planning on this being pretty close to a perfect squared trinomial. So I'm going to have a times x squared plus b over ax plus, this term right here is going to have to be half of this squared. So really b over 2a squared. And it's going to be all of this plus some expression. And you can kind of see what's going to happen here. This is going to be x plus b over a, uh, b over 2a squared plus whatever this fudge factor is here whatever I get when I have to, whatever I would have to get to make this combine here. So this is really going to be c minus b squared. And this is going to need a a c, and I'm going to need over 2a, so 4a squared. So it's going to be a pretty complicated term over here, because I'm going to need to make sure that it cancels out with this term. And the terms here leave me with just c over a, so I'm going to have to put that 4 over here. Now, if this looks familiar, if this b squared minus 4ac looks familiar, it should, because I know many of you are already familiar with the quadratic formula. Remember, the quadratic formula is how I can find the solutions to a quadratic equation in general form. x, in this case, is a formula of the coefficients a, b, and c. A x, in this case, actually ends up being negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2 times a. And of course, this plus or minus is important for two reasons. One, because we're used to quadratics, or second-degree polynomials, having two solutions. And so I should be able to get two different numbers out of this. And two, because the square root is already present in the formula, this is talking exclusively about the principal square root that we talked about in our last video. But I want to consider both the positive and negative values. So in other words, this is going to give us our x-intercepts. So I can get my x-intercepts out of this formula here. Of course, my y-intercept is really easy. My y-intercept is basically going to be whatever my function is evaluated at 0. Um, so really what I've got here is the point 0, comma, f of 0. But keep in mind that f of 0 is what I get when I substitute 0 into this equation, which of course is going to be 0 comma c. But if I substitute 0 into this equation, I'm going to have uh, 0 comma, really, a h squared plus k. Because that's what happens when I substitute a 0 into the standard form. Of course, negative 
squared becomes positive. And I'm just combining like terms. These are all real numbers. So if I want to find my y-intercepts, then I'm going to have to follow this formula here, whichever one of these is most convenient for me. One of the things we notice from our completing the square over here is that h ends up being the opposite of b over 2a, because I really want to have x minus h, but I've got x plus this fraction over here. And k ends up being this correction factor that we talked about, this 4ac minus b squared over 4a squared. So just be aware that this exists this way. So given either of these forms, I can find all of the terms that we talked about in our previous diagram. I can find my x-intercepts. I can find my y-intercepts. I can find the solutions. And I can also find uh, what h and k is given a, b, and c. I can also find my axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry, of course, comes from my vertex. My vertex is really at h, k, so this is really the equation x equals h. And I have a way to find h, so I could say it's just x equals negative b over 2a. So I've got ways to find all of these parts that we've talked about. The question is, what if I want to get backwards? In other words, what if I have a graph and I want to come up with a function here? So what I've got here, I've got my graph, and of course we identified several of these points before. I have my vertex. My vertex is at the point 2 comma negative 1. And if I use the uh, if I use the standard form y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, I already know h and k because those come from here. I just don't know a, but I really have x minus 2 squared plus 1. But I do know that I have a y-intercept, which is at 0, 3, so I know that if I substitute a 0 into this equation, I should get a 3 out of it. And actually, that should be a minus 1. Minus 1. So I'm going to have 3 equals a times negative 2 squared is 4 minus 1. So I end up with 4a equals 4, or a equals 1. And I've got the equation of my parabola now, y equals 1 times x minus 2 squared minus 1. In other words, I have no dilation effect, either vertically or horizontally. Of course, once I know that I have this equation, I can certainly rewrite this in general form just by distributing this binomial. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 3, or y equals x squared minus 4x plus, why did I write a 3 there? 4 minus 1 is 3. And then of course once I have this form, it's easy for me to either factor, noticing that it's x minus 1 times x minus 3, or I can go back to my quadratic formula, a is 1, b is negative 4, c is 3, and x is equal to negative negative 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 3, over 2 times a. Or I get 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 2. Well, if I take 4 plus or minus 2 over 2. 4 plus 2 is 6, half of that is 3. 4 minus 2 is 2, half of that is 1. So either way, I get the exact same solutions. I get the same x-intercepts. I get the same roots. So it's important to note that if I have a graph, I can come up with the function that goes with it just by looking at a few key points. Similarly, if I have a function, I can find those few key points by using the formulas we talked about on the previous slide. So that is a thing we can do. The last thing that I want to talk about today is I want to talk about how these coefficients, how these a's, b's, c's, h's, and k's affect our domain and our range. Well, half of this is really easy. 
uh, because y equals ax squared plus bx plus c or a times x minus h squared plus k is a polynomial the range is unbounded i mean excuse me not the range the domain is unbounded in other words my range is going to be all the reals from negative infinity to positive infinity that's going to be my domain my range is a little bit harder what i need to know for my range is for range I need to know, is this a parabola that opens upwards, or is this a parabola that opens downwards? And keep in mind that A determines that. So this is where A is greater than zero, and this is where A is less than zero. So if A is greater than zero, the range is going to go all the way up to infinity. So my right boundary is infinity, but my left boundary is going to be a very particular number. It's going to be whatever k happens to be. k? k? That doesn't sound right. Yeah, it is k. Because remember, k is my vertex. k is this bottom point, h comma k. But of course, if I'm dealing with the general form, then I need to have k in terms of all these values that we talked about, and that's that 4ac minus b squared over 4a squared comma, infinity. Now, if a is less than zero, then of course I'm going down to negative infinity in both of these cases. So I'm going to go from negative infinity to k, or from negative infinity to our 4ac minus b squared over 4a squared. So what's really important when we're dealing with quadratics, when we're dealing with uh, parabolas, there's a very intimate relationship between parabolas and quadratics. The coefficients of x squared x in our constant term help determine a lot of the characteristics of parabolas. Similarly, a lot of the parts of parabolas uniquely determine a, b, c, or a, h, and k. Our task is, given a parabola, can we come up with a formula that generated it? Or given a formula that generates a parabola, can we come up with a parabola? Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.